good. I said no, I thought you meant so, to. So just go it. straight. What? Look, just go straight, yeah. I think I've gone more. Last one. Wait, there's the very bottom and then one. That's what I meant. Yeah, go. This is our top well, as you can see, still very, very low down here, and it should be there. So this well has come up by at least two metres, maybe more, in two days. That's how much it's rained.
I'm just boiling up a huge pan of water to wash my hair but it is really starting to rain I think we forecast a thunderstorm so I think I'm gonna do a bucket bath <laughs> rather than try and have a shower because yeah it may start thundering any any moment not a nice time to be caught out in an outdoor shower So we're definitely planning to upgrade the bathroom. It's definitely kind of the last big discomfort that we have as the winters come round. Is yeah, the shower situation is a little less than ideal. We have got a few plans. We can't decide what makes what works best. Samawin, come on. Uh, we had thought to buy one of those metal sheds to put the shower in but we went well we firstly we ordered one and then it turned out it wasn't then in stock so we had to cancel it and then we went to Brico Marche one of the sort of DIY, DIY shops here and we looked at them and for three they're 350 euros so it's not a cheap investment and the quality just doesn't isn't as good as I would want for spending that much money so I think we've gone back on that now um, and I think we're going to go back to sort of trying to reconstruct better what we already have set up. Just put a better, <laughs> better roof on it. But I mean, I don't really mind having a bucket bath. It's uh, quite cosy in here. It's, it's not ideal, but it's not a big burden. We were planning that we would finish the chicken coop and then we'd move on to the bathroom. The blocks that we ordered for the chicken coop still haven't arrived because it has just been pretty much non-stop rain for about three weeks now it feels like. So things just get in the way of moving forward with things but it's fine, we've got many many years <laughs> to resolve these problems and we've adapted to the current circumstances and yeah you kind of just get used to what your burdens are I guess, is it a burden? challenges are and they don't really feel like challenges it's just the way of life currently and we know each time it's going to get better and compared to our very first winter here this feels like an absolute dream so I will not complain but I am going to do a little drawing now I've been doing a daily sketchbook project with my dad who is an incredible artist and I'm actually going to show you one of my absolute favourite drawings that he has done. Uh, he did it yesterday and I'm just in love with it and uh, yes yeah, it's Frankie Addy Forth. My Welsh pronunciation is not great, I'm not a Welsh speaker, Joan is, um, which is Frankie on the road. We're now off grid but we were Frankie on the road and I just love this drawing so much. Um, but yeah I'm going to work in my sketchbook now. So this is what we've been doing. Uh, we're on day 65 I think, we've been going a long time so I have a little newsletter that I send out usually each week if I'm <laughs> organised enough uh, just showing what's in it so I'll leave that in there. <laughs> These two are always fighting. Yeah I'll leave the link to that in the description if you wanted to sign up and just see some of my my work and some updates on my illustration stuff and one thing I often get asked is which pens I'm using um, so I like fine liner pens you get a few different brands yeah this is the brand I like best and then you have this is the thickness of the pen so I think this drawing is probably a 0.4 I quite like to use a really thin one as well like a 0.1 yeah a few people have asked so I just thought I would share it's such a nice nice way to draw Diogo wants to play with everyone and no one else wants to play so he's just getting told off a lot. Drow still has his fangs. The vampire boy. He's a funny cat.
turn, everyone. Up and da. Another wet and soggy day in central Portugal. Luckily, it's filling up all our wells and probably reversing a lot of last year's drought. So can't really complain, but it is getting a bit tedious now. But we're going to make a lobscouse. Now, a lobscouse is one of those dishes that I think every country, at least in Europe, has. It started off from the Vikings, Norwegian dish, I think. Um, and they used to use bacalhau, which is the salt cod, in Liverpool, for example, where they just call it scouse. Where I think, if I'm not mistaken, is where the, the word scouse and them calling themselves scousers comes from. So like in Liverpool they use beef. In Wales we use lamb and leeks. These are things that grow easily in whichever country you're from. I do wonder whether, and a question for any of our Portuguese viewers, whether or not the sopa de pedra is effectively the Portuguese version of this. So traditionally in the, like, the Welsh quarry, slave quarry villages, they would start off on a Monday with all of the dish and then throughout the week they would add more parts to it and then like the saying goes that it was the most tasty on the Friday after a few days of cooking. Um, the other thing of course that splits Welsh, I'm not sure if they do this anywhere else so again this question whether it's but it's definitely part of the Welsh recipe is beer. Now we're supposed to use a bitter ale but we don't have any bitter ale so we're going to use sagres which is a lager. But I'm sure it'll work. So with using lamb, normally, it's usually quite a nice cut. Whereas this one has got chunks of bone and stuff everywhere on it. So I think I'm going to roast it first. And then try and soften it up and get some of the bits out. And then we can use those bits to make a stock. Jump in here, Jock. Possibly grab me some rosemary. That's all prepped, we just need to wait for the lamb to finish roasting. We've got two hours until the football starts. Today is France Morocco. Let me know in the comments who you wanted to win, because by the time you watch it, it'll be finished. <laughs> I have no doubt mentioned it before. Like, I'm, I'm quite a sports fan. Uh, rugby, football, F1, snooker, tiddlywinks, any of it. Like when I lived in the UK, I would, like, I would try and watch all of the games. So I'd have like Sky Sports. BT Sport, all of that, and then moved to Portugal and couldn't use any of it. Now, obviously, whilst watching the football in Portuguese, like I have done for the last couple of years, is no doubt helping my my Portuguese, mostly uh, football words, but so you know, super helpful in day to day life. But it does help with a good chat in the pastel area. So, so yeah, watching football in Portuguese is fun, but it's just not quite the same. And that's where Surfshark came to the rescue, and incidentally, they are today's sponsor. If you don't know them already, then Surfshark is a VPN, which is a virtual private network. A VPN basically encrypts or blows out everything that you do on the internet and therefore keeps you safe and private online. There are many perks to a VPN, but one of our favourites is that you can change your IP address to that of a different country, which then allows you to easily access and unblock streaming platforms such as Sky Sports, ITV and the BBC. So whether you're travelling and are missing your favourite TV show, or an important Liverpool game, a simple click and you're all sorted. Another huge benefit that we've only just discovered is that you can actually get better prices on things like rental cars or flights. Websites will actually track your data and for example if you keep visiting a car rental website whilst making a decision then they will often raise the prices as they know that you're interested and might panic into spending more. Click on Surfshark, suddenly the price has dropped again. If you click on the link in our description and use our code Frankie you'll get a huge 85% discount and also your first three months for free. Stock time. I don't know if you guys make stock at home, but I absolutely swear by making your own vegetable stock. And the brilliant thing is you just use all of the leftovers. No real need to waste anything in the kitchen. 
whether that's like fish bones or anything. What on earth is that? Yeah, fish bones, anything. You can save it all and you can make a stock out of all of it. So that's all of our leftovers from today. Some more tart. And then basically bring it to the boil. Soften up all the veg. Maybe add some more water. The difference in a stock like this compared to stock cubes is insane. This way is the way forward. If you've never done it before, give it a try. I really wish you could smell this. It's been simmering for about an hour. Right, so big pan. Oil. Generous helping in with the lamb. Next, potatoes and onions. I'll try and get the onions to slightly brown. Season with salt. And now we add the bitter ale. It's probably about maybe a pint, just over a pint. And then we need to reduce that by about half. It would of course be rude to not have a glass myself. Saud. There we go, about half gone. You can see it's getting a bit dark. So, rest of the veg in. And now I will sieve off the stock. That's just simmering for about an hour. It smells absolutely divine. So, now we add that. Don't spill it. Now we cook that for two hours with the lid on. Depending on the tenderness of the lamb, we might then take the lid off and cook it until it's like fork tender and then give it a taste season if you like we'll add some time and then yeah pretty much good to go if you don't finish it tonight see if you've got anything you fancy putting in it tomorrow go for it just wanted to share with you these absolutely beautiful hand-painted tiles we've been sent by our friend Rita who also had the spare wine tank that we picked up last uh, year. That's why there's a, a few wine themed ones but how absolutely beautiful are these. They're all hand-painted. This is quite a famous uh, tile factory here in Portugal. Viva Lamego, I think is how you say it. I just wanted to share with you because they're so beautiful. Like, look at these. I think this one is my favourite. So sweet. I think they're going to be a beautiful addition to the kitchen on the walls. So thank you so much, Rita.
So, slight change of scenery tonight. Yes, we've been invited out for dinner by Ken from OK Portugal. Did a really a brilliant video about, what's the beef called? Wagyu beef. Wagyu. Red Wagyu beef. Yeah, but there's a aka, Akaushi. Akaushi cows um, that are being bred here in Portugal. So you should go check out his, it's like a documentary. Yeah, he did it really, well. really well. So yeah, he's been invited to go sample. Yeah, it's like a tasting menu. So I think the chefs will actually show off. So the restaurant's called Aka Sushi. It's mm -hmm. in Castelo Branco on the main square. They do do really good sushi as well as really good steak. Yeah. So this should be really fun. Yeah, yeah, we're looking forward to it. So Can't thanks wait. for the invite, Ken, and um, uh, we'll take you along. Are you guys excited to eat? I yeah. can't wait. I can't <laughs> wait. This is honestly, this is the best steak in Portugal. And uh, we've come here numerous times and made numerous vlogs. And uh, I really had to tell this whole story to everyone. And tonight, Ooh. I've never tried a tomahawk, so we're going to try their really expensive Ooh. tomahawk. I've Excellent. never tried their sushi. Are you ready to eat? Very. I've never dreamt of spending this much money on a tomahawk steak. So being able to try one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be amazing. This is beautiful, isn't it? This is how the professionals do it. Okay, so, starting with Orlando, well, wait, starting with Tina. Tina. Thank you, Tina. Orlando, thank you so much. Thank you. It's on YouTube and you can watch it on their channel. It and is. On our channel. Thank you so much, everyone. This is it. Goodbye, ciao. Good night. Good night.